This is Couples Court with the Cutlers. This is the case of Evans versus Jones. Miss Evans, you believed that you had met the perfect Southern gentleman and were considering marriage, but now all of that is in question. Would you share with the court what is at stake today? Yes, Your Honor. What's at stake today is my relationship. I've been in this relationship and I'm just not sure about some things. So what I'm looking for is a marriage and I'm looking for commitment. And I'm not willing to waste my time. So I'm here today to get answers and that's what I would like. All right. You want to know, is this the one? That's correct. I want to sure. And if he's the one, you ready to do this thing? That's right. All right. And you're All not right. sure he's the one because you think what? That he could be cheating on me, Your Honor. Okay. Mr. Jones. Yes, sir. She says she thinks you might be the one. Yes, sir. But she needs to find out if you're cheating on her. <laughs> she is the one? Yes, ma'am. I believe she is. Is right. she the only one? She's the only one. All right. And are you the one? Yes, sir. I am the one. You're the one? Yes, sir. And she's your one and only? She's my one and only. Okay. Well, if you thought he was a Southern gentleman, what did he do to make you think that when you met him? When I first met Dale, we were at a barbecue. So we were at like a family gathering or whatever with some mutual friends. And so I seen Dale come in, but I didn't know it was him at that time. Uh huh. So when I seen him, I said, Ooh, who was that? He is fine. But you see how she did that? Uh -huh. I mean, look, not, not just the neck, the whole body moved. Yeah, right. yeah, yeah. 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 Who was that? Look, look, fine. look. Right. So when we did finally hook up, they introduced us or whatever. And from that moment, we've been inseparable. Um, we dated for about two months and then we moved in together. Okay. Or whatever. So that's how quick it was. Like, I, I was infatuated by him. She was like, ooh, look at that. And then that was the one. They were trying to... I know that was like, what? No, it wasn't just, ooh, look at that. It was, ooh, look at that. You gotta get the shoulders into it. Come on, do it with it. Come on. <laughs> get the shoulders with it. Yeah, yeah. I mean, she did the shoulders like, ooh, look at that. I, you, yeah. you are very taken with that part. It is, because it reminds me of... I don't know. <laughs> what does but that remind you of? My memory of when we first met was you looked at me and you were like, ooh, look at that. <laughs> Now, are you saying that? Now, now it, it, wait, wait, it's wait, been wait, a wait. number of years. Maybe uh -uh. my memory's a little fuzzy. Maybe it's a little colored. <laughs> but in my mind, the way I see it, the way I remember it. That's was, what I did when I saw you? Yeah, it was like, Ooh, Did you see that? me do that or did I tell you that? In my mind, <laughs> in my mind, <laughs> look. That, that's my story, and I'm sticking to it. Yeah, you had a cute thing working, but I don't know if it was all the shoulders into it or not. I just, I'm not sure about that. I'm just not sure about that. W agree to disagree. Okay, that's where we are. All that's right, Mr. Jones. Yes, sir. When you first saw Miss Evans, did you, ooh, look at that. Did you do that? Yes, sir. Well, when I first met her, it was like, this too, this too perfect. You know? Uh-huh. And it was just like, everything was clicking, and like, we were laughing, we were getting along. And then the actual sexual part came about, and man. <laughs> Boom. <laughs> All right. All right. Woo! Wait a minute, I just got a, got actually, a sweat on, wouldn't it? Wait. <laughs> I was ready to propose that night. You were, oh! See? All right, Miss right Evans. Now, I was ready. Woo, I feel woo, like woo. I was ready. <laughs> <laughs> See, that, that look on his face when he went, Boy, it was wild. I mean, that's that's the equivalent of the shoulder thing. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you're the shoulder thing. A little thing. bit more than the shoulder there. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> <laughs> Woo, okay. I, I ain't mad at you. <laughs> yes, sir. So you got this perfect relationship. Everything's going fine. Uh, but then things weren't going fine. What was the first red flag that you saw? One night, we were cooking, and Dale was in the kitchen, and I was in the living room. Okay. And so the phone is going off. Just, just beeping and beeping and beeping. So I'm really not paying no attention or whatever because I'm out of Your phone or his phone? His, Dale's phone. His phone. Okay. Okay. And something's like, look at the phone. You know how women intuition goes? Yeah, oh yeah. And so I look at the phone and once I start scrolling down, I start seeing text messages. And so one was like, I can't wait to see you tonight. Then I scroll down a little bit further and I see a new picture in the phone. So I'm like, really? So at this point, I'm off the couch, I'm in the kitchen and I'm in Dale's face. And I'm like, what is this and what is going on? And you submitted the text and the photos to the court, correct? Yes, I did submit it to the court. Okay, this is your recollection of what you saw. Yes, that's correct. All right, then you scroll a little bit on the phone and you find the pictures. Yes. All right, 
Mr. Jones, why are you getting naked photos? Well, well, the naked photo came from Facebook. Um, a, a girl, she do, she take twerk videos and she take pictures. If you like the picture or you comment on the picture, she send pictures to your inbox. Oh, Which, sounds like a block needs to be put on. But anyway, I was entertaining the Facebook and entertaining the pictures. I saved the picture from my phone and sent it to my homeboy phone to show him because we had the same girl. What? We, we, we ended up getting a picture of the same girl. So I sent the picture to him to show him I had the girl, too, in my phone, too. You know, she sent me a picture, too. OK, so this woman that you have a picture of who sent you these inappropriate pictures... Yes. She twerks online for folk? Yes, ma'am. <laughs> so it's not... You're saying she doesn't just twerk for you, she twerks no, for she anybody twerk who for shows up. Whoever okay. liked the picture, she twerk. She and twerking. So, and so... She and, she, and she twerk for you, she twerk for your friends. Yeah, she twerking for everybody. She'll twerk, she'll twerk, twerk for you, too, Yon, if you, you know... <laughs>
Oh, you submitted a picture. Yes, and... I did, y'all. Okay, what are we park... looking at? Okay, what we're looking at is the park lot of his job, the circle right there in the middle. That's where the car should have been parked at. All right, Mr. Jones, where were you? Well, I never was completely honest about her, to her about where my car was at the time, but my nephew had my car. <laughs> 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 Let me look. <laughs> nope, it doesn't say you were born last night. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, why would you be untruthful if your because, family... Because I was really sorry to cut y'all, ma'am. I was really pretty much tired of going through the trust issues and the questioning every other day about what I'm doing, what's this, what's that, what's this. So I was at, at that point, I was kind of fed up with the explaining and... The, so I was like, just think what you want to think. I'm, I'm tired. I mean... Okay, so she confronts you about your car not being at the job. Yeah. What do you say in response? That your nephew had the car? I didn't say nothing at that time. You mean okay. now? No, no. What did you tell her at the time? Nothing. I, was just, I just hung up the phone. I was tired of dealing with the, the trust issues. Like, you don't came to my job, really? So the first time you're hearing about his nephew had the car is today? Yes. And so is that another sign for yeah, you? That is another sign for me. I'm just trying to get to the bottom of it. I want to know what's really going on. I really do love Dale, but I just really want to know what's going on. So, Mr. Jones, you're sticking with your story that this is all a misunderstanding. Yes, sir. A series of misunderstandings and just unfortunate I, coincidences. I, I, I probably won't even say a misunderstanding. I would say more of just a, a distrust issue. I mean, it's like blown out of proportion more than what <laughs> it is today. So, do you think this is something that she just wants to see these things so she's seeing them? I think so. That's what I you think? I think it's, like, something that's ongoing. That my time I'm is valuable, and I don't backlash. have time to waste my time. I think it's like my time is really valuable, something. and I don't have time to waste my time. Okay. I'm looking for marriage. I want to be married. I want a family. That's what I want. Well, Mr. Cutler, we're at the point we're gonna find out is he a Southern gentleman or a Southern cheater? We have done a full investigation. At this time, the court would like to call forensic voice analyst Guy Wolf and licensed certified polygraph examiner Dave Lawrence to determine, is he cheating? <laughs> So, Mr. Wolf, you performed a forensic voice analysis on Mr. Jones. Is that correct? Yes, ma'am. And Mr. Lawrence, you completed a polygraph examination of Mr. Jones. Is that correct? That's correct, ma'am. All right. Mr. Wolf, let's take a look at the first question you asked. Yes, ma'am. Since the beginning of your relationship with Ms. Evans, have you had sexual intercourse with anyone other than her? No. What did the forensic voice analysis determine? The voice analysis determined that he was being deceptive, Your Honor. Mr. Lawrence, you asked the identical question. Yes, ma'am. What was his response? He said no. What did the polygraph exam determine? The law detector determined that he was being deceptive. Mr. Jones, you can't blame this one on the nephew. <laughs> Who were you with and why? I haven't been with nobody. All right. It's gonna be that party, Mr. Cutler. Mr. Wolf, let's take a look at the second question that was asked of Mr. Jones. Were the condoms Miss Evans found in your car used by you for sexual intercourse with another woman? No. What did the forensic voice analysis determine? The voice analysis determined that he was being deceptive, Your Honor. And Mr. Lawrence, you asked the identical question, correct? Yes, correct. What was his response to that question? He said no. What did the lie detector determine? The lie detector determined that he was being deceptive. Mr. Jones, it's time to come clean. Who were you with and why? I mean, the only person I can think of is my ex. All right. You, you have been with your ex since you've been in the relationship with Miss Evans. Yes. 
more than once. Yes. Okay. Now, Ms. Evans, you need to give him the truth about where this relationship is going. Well, Dale, I mean, I don't know. I don't think I want to continue this right now. Unless you can show something different, I'm, I'm good. You all are dating. You've been together for seven years. And I noticed from the court papers that, Ms. Power, you're 18 years older than Mr. Van Gell. But, Mr. Van Gell, you're concerned. This relationship is on rocky ground right now, and you're trying to see where it's going, and it depends on what happens here today. Is that right? Yes, Your Honor. Okay, you've opened this case. Tell us why. Because I believe my uh, cougar is on the prowl. Oh. Ah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, she disappears. Uh, we used to have sex all the time, like, pow, 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 pow. <laughs> now, <laughs> oh, no sex. Cougar disappears, okay. leaving the cub behind. Oh! Oh. <laughs> he, he's oh. Got a, he got a million of them, Mr. Cutler. I so. see that. So, <laughs> when you say there's been a decrease in the sex, is it, oh, is no it sex. less, is it less pow or, oh, you know, no, what are you... No, nothing. Uh, no, no, nothing. No, 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 nothing. Power no pow at all. No nothing at all. Okay. I forgot what sex was even like. Oh! oh. <laughs> okay. It's been that long. Yes, it has. It's been oh. that long. Yes. And so you think, okay, if she's not pounding with oh, you... Pounding with another cub. Oh. Oh. Okay, do you really have to do the pow pow part? <laughs> yes, I do. <laughs> I can't with you. All right, Miss Powell. Yes. Oh, no, not yes, Miss Powell. Powell. <laughs> yeah, Miss Powell. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Oh, I, yes. Behave. All right. Miss Powell. Yes. Yes, Your Honor. Uh, Mr. Van Gell says that he thinks you're on the prowl, and he's saying y'all have not had sex. He's forgotten what it's like. Is this true? Are you all not having sex? Has he forgotten what it's like? Well, it is true that we rarely get intimate anymore, but uh, it has a lot to do with how he treats me and all these accusations. It doesn't make you very romantic. Okay, so it's not because you're having sex with somebody else. No, it's because... absolutely not. All it's right, that, you know, it's a it's a, a feeling you, that you have when you feel loved and you want to give it back. When you don't feel it, they're not giving it to you, and it's accusations, unfounded accusations. You, you don't feel romantic. Well, so... you know, they say that intimacy starts here. Absolutely. So if your mind ain't right, you can't get your body right. Absolutely. All right, so you're saying it has nothing to do with cheating. It's the relationship that's keeping you from wanting to pow. Yeah, you that's... To come. that's... <laughs> well, Your Honor, I beg to differ. It's when you disappear all hours of day and night and you don't tell your, your partner where you're at. So okay, so what does that look I, I like? Feel right that, I feel that that, if I can interject... No, hold on, hold, hold on. on. Let, let me, me get some info. You say she disappears. Disappears. What, what, what do you mean? Uh, well, for example, uh, I'm renovating my house and she said that she was going to go do gardening. A little p time passes by. I go outside. Uh, no Kelly. Where's she at? Where's Kelly? Can't even get her on the phone. She wanted, the phone goes straight to voicemail. And so I, I decided to go, proceed to go back inside the house. And I'll leave it be, okay? This is just another Houdini act of hers. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so... So, so uh, did she come back? Yeah, she came back smelling <laughs> liquor and sex. Oh. oh. Smelling like liquor uh, and sex? combination, uh, liquor and sex. So she's obviously was... Having sex and drinking. Ew. Miss Powell. <laughs> yes, Your Honor. Where does one go gardening where the result of that is smelling like liquor and sex? Um, well, I, I uh, talked to my neighbor across the street. I, I knew him before I met uh, Chachi. I call him Chachi. Okay. Yeah. And uh, I just spoke with him for a little while. You know, he's our neighbor. Um, nothing wrong with knowing your neighbors. Oh, that's he... good. Too friendly. Well, uh, unless it's knowing in the biblical sense, then that's a yeah, little different. That would be wrong. Knowing would your neighbor. Do that. Well, hold no, on, Ms. Powell, let me ask this, because you've given a valid explanation as to why you came back smelling like liquor. What I haven't heard is an explanation of why you came back smelling like sex. Well, maybe it's been so long he forgot what sex smells uh, like. I have not forgotten what sex <laughs> smells like. Oh, uh, and okay. then, for example, too, mm -hmm. she, we get a phone call, well, she does, at 1.30, 2 in the morning. Her son, obviously, this is what I'm getting told, was in an accident, a motorcycle accident. And she has to leave immediately. I remember Absolutely. when I got phone calls at 2 in the morning years ago before we got into a relationship, mm -hmm. what time it was. She, and uh, I asked her for a little bit of proof. Okay, let me see a picture of how he's doing if he's all road rash eating up. So, nothing. She can't even send me a simple text picture or nothing. Hey. 
Okay, so in your mind, that late that, night that phone call, all, yeah. that late night phone call, to, in your mind means one thing. Yes, sir. Yes, Your Honor. What's that one thing? Ring. Hello. Hey, what, what you doing? Um, nothing. Really? Yeah. What? What's can, up? Can I slide by? <laughs> <laughs> Why you gotta slide? Ew. <laughs> All right, I'll be there at about 30. All right. All right, bet. Are you here then? Yeah, I he can't. pretty good. <laughs> so is that the kind of conversation you thought was going on? Yes, Your Honor. Yes. Okay. Yes, yeah. Exactly. Uh, no. You know, here's the funny thing. No phone call, no nothing. She's gone a week. And I... A, a week? Week. And no contact with you during no this week? No contact for a whole seven days. Not when a text? Did, not a text. Not no a phone nothing. call? Nothing. And when she did, it was twice. And she was whispering the first time and said, oh, I got to go. I don't have time to talk to you. Miss Powell. Yes, it was an EMS called me, 1.30 in the morning, said, are you the mother of? And I said, I am. And they said, this is EMS. Your son's been in a motorcycle accident. We're on the way to the hospital. Immediately, as a mother, Absolutely. bring tears to my eyes now. Yeah. And it was very serious. And so I immediately went to his aid and... ICU. He was in ICU. Oh, yeah. I'm going to go downstairs to, in front of the hospital, take a picture so you can see that I'm at the hospital. That should never happen. Let me get this straight. From your perspective, you're there caring for your son. Mr. Van Gale is calling and saying, what you doing? Who you doing? Yeah, what you yeah. doing? What you doing? You're like, I'm not. I don't want to do this. Mm -hmm. I've got to get all my energy on, on my this. Son, yes. Mr. Van Gale, were you calling saying, what are you doing? What are you doing? Were you that, texting that, her saying that no, too? No, your honor. I was at, went to work every day of that Under week, oath. continued uh, my routine. I was just simply uh, uh, trying to find out if her son's okay. And also if she's really where she says she is because she already pulled the Houdini act. And, and now uh, I don't what? even know who she is. She sleeps I... with her phone and I have evidence of that too. And I do. Everything. Okay, I so do. what about the phone now? If she sleeps with the phone. She got the, uh, two different types of locks on. What do you mean she sleeps with the phone? I mean, she... Well, I brought evidence in a picture of... Uh, okay. Actually, Would you get proof, that, yeah. please? Yes, sir. Here you go. Thank you, you took a picture okay. of me with my phone? <laughs> you said she's... Well, <laughs> okay. Well... Okay. Well... So this is her asleep in bed. And in her hand is her cell phone. Uh, yes, Your Honor. And it's definitely not me in her hand. So was this a one-time thing? You know, sometimes somebody might fall asleep with their phone. Is this, this is a every day, every night thing. All right, Miss yeah. Powell, is this true? You this sleep is, with the this, phone? This is true. I do sleep with it. Maybe not so close. Well, maybe. But ever since that happened with my son, and I'm 100 miles away from him, and um, I needed to be able to, to get a... Get, for him to get in touch with me. Well, Mr. Van Gale, ha have you found anything that oh. makes you think she's cheating? Uh, yes, Your Honor. I actually, I put evidence in that folder up there of a hotel key. Uh, so, I, okay. I see that. Where did you and, find uh, it and how did you find it? I was cleaning out our vehicle because I was getting ready to go leave to go do a job. And, and when I, you say our vehicle, the vehicle you and she share? Yes, Your Honor. Okay, you are the only two that really drive it? Yes, Your Honor. Okay. He, so I'm cleaning out the front, getting ready to load up, get myself loaded up and get down the road. So I promptly see something sticking out from the floor mat and it was a hotel key. Okay. okay. I know we're not going to hotels together. I haven't been at a hotel. All right. So, Miss Powell, have you been at a hotel? No, I have not. But we, you know, it's a cargo van. It's a work van. And I haul a lot of things also. You know, we, we scrap, we pick up, uh, move things for people. And it could have been anybody's. Honestly, it is not mine at all. So, you have it's not been at a hotel secret. with another no. man? No, but Mr. I have not. I think it's embellished. He's embellishing a lot. Not okay. that way. So, Mr. Van Gale, she says, you, she says you are embellishing. So, we talked about what you've seen and what you found. Has anybody told you they've seen her or anything like that? Uh, I have my witness here, uh, actually. All right, okay, ma'am, would you... you step over? Take a step behind the podium, please. And tell us your name, please, for the record. Jasmine Mueller. Okay. Ms. Mueller, what is your relationship to Mr. Van Gale and Ms. Powell? He is my boyfriend's oldest brother, and I recently, like, lived with them. Okay, so you were living with Mr. Van Gale and Ms. Powell? Correct. Okay, all right. Did you and Ms. Powell ever have any discussions about her relationships? Yes. Okay, definitely. tell me about that. 
She told me that she is changing her van into a camper to live in it and has plans to leave Thomas. She told you this? Yep. Did she ever tell you that she had cheated on him? Yes, Your Honor. She did? What did she say? She said she is dating a black guy and she is putting other men on the back burner. So she's dating this one man and she's putting all other men on the black on the back, back burner? burner? Yep. Was that a slip of the tongue? <laughs> what am I gonna do with you? I, I wish I could have been that clever. Okay, uh -huh. she's put all other men on the back burner and she's going with yes, this one man. Yes, Your Honor. Oh, my God. S Mr. Mr. Van Gogh, okay. did you know all this? No, I did not until I was informed when they uh, proceeded to leave the, my residence. He was back. kicking her, them uh, out when she decided to come up with this information. I never said that to her. Well, Ms. Mueller, she says you just said yeah. that out of spite because you all were being put out. Is that true? No, Your Honor. She begged me not to say anything. But when she turned Honey, against me... I wouldn't me, beg hold you on, Ms. for hold anything. Hold on, Ms. Powell. Ms. Powell, hold on. When she turned against me and started her crap the way she did, I told him everything that she begged me not to say. Oh. So you, you were like, I'm going to do the right thing and tell my boyfriend's brother what's really going down here. Yes, I did do As the right thing, and I told him. suitcases out the door. Okay. All right, thank you. All right, Ms. Mueller, have a seat, please. I think we've heard enough. This court has done a full and a complete investigation. At this time, the court will call a certified forensic digital consultant, Patrick Seward, to determine, is she cheating? Long please let's call Mr. Seward in. Seward. Good day, sir. How are you? I'm well. How are you? I'm doing good, thank you. Good. Would you state your credentials, please, for the court? Uh, I am a certified digital forensic consultant uh, with 15 years in law enforcement experience and five of those years conducting high-tech criminal investigations. What did you do to investigate this case? Uh, I conducted a full forensic examination on Ms. Powell's phone. Um, the examination can recover pictures and videos and text messages, including those that have been deleted. Uh, the task was to uncover any evidence that Ms. Powell may have been cheating. And did you find any evidence that leads you to believe that Ms. Powell is cheating? Uh, I did not recover anything related to cheating. However, I did recover an interesting conversation between uh, Ms. Powell and a friend discussing how she felt about a relationship with Mr. Van Gell. Okay. And it wasn't good. And this is what you recovered from her phone? Correct. And Ms. Powell writes, I even have taken out the passenger seat so maybe he will get the hint. I don't even want him to ride with me anywhere. Hmm. And this was... Yeah. Very recent. Very recent. Yes. All right. And you wrote this. I did. I am, I am so tired of... He's not fun to be around anymore. It's the constant bickering. It's, you know, and, and, you know, quite frankly, if he doesn't stop, I don't want him to ride with me. To further investigate this case, we ordered Ms. Powell to take a lie detector test. At this time, the court would like to call certified polygraph examiner Michael Williams. Ron, please escort him in. Mr. Williams, so you did a polygraph examination of Ms. Powell, is that correct? That's correct. All right. You asked Ms. Powell, have you had sexual intercourse at a hotel with another man since being in relationship with Mr. Van Gale? What was her response? Your Honor, she said no. What did the lie detector determine? The lie detector determined she was being deceptive. That's, I have, I'm, that's not true. I knew it. I knew it. Gut instinct. To, uh, you know what I got? I have not. Gut always right. All right, Mr. Van Gale. I can tell that you are angry. Oh, I'm more than angry. He should be because All right. I, I didn't well, let's get, it. let's get to the oh, next question. Oh, you didn't question. do it? No, I didn't do it. Lie. All right, let's see what question number two. Mr. Williams, you asked Ms. Powell, did you have sexual intercourse with someone when you said you were visiting your son after his accident? What was her response? Your Honor, she said no. What did the lie detector determine? The lie detector determined she was being deceptive. <laughs> I knew it. I don't see how it's so easy for you to stand there and still continue to lie. 
You don't have enough respect for me to tell me to my face? Mr. Van Gell, you came here to get answers, and now you have those answers. The polygraph determined that she has been with somebody else. So now that you have those answers, what do you want to do with this relationship? I'm done. I'm glad to hear you say that. <laughs> and, Mr. Van Gell, I mean, you shouldn't feel any, any remorse or regret. Yes, you're sad that this relationship is coming to an end because you've been together for all these years. But here's the thing. There is no use holding on to somebody who's already let go of you. Right. Amen. See, that doesn't make sense. Yeah. And so, yes, it hurts. Yes, it's a hard pill to swallow. The accusations are not going to stop because you can't trust her now. No. And if you can't trust her, this relationship is not going anywhere. You all have been married for seven years, and your anniversary is coming up. Is that right? That's right. right. Now, in your court papers, it was indicated that there was some infidelity in the beginning of your marriage, but you all worked past that. But, Ms. Bearden, you brought this case because you think that there's something going on now. Yes, Your Honor. Okay. Tell us what happened in the past. I received a phone call from my family member, and she told me, did you know that Jerome was in Las Vegas? And I said, no. And she said, well, he's been out there for three days. So, immediately, I'm calling his phone. He's not picking up. I keep calling, text messages, text message. Three days go by. Then he finally calls. He tells me that basically he went to Las Vegas with my family member's boyfriend. They just had fun, whatever. Okay, so I brushed it off. We moved into our place. And two weeks after, I noticed strange things happening. Phone calls in the middle of the night, text messages, going in the bathroom to use the phone, right? And this is early in your marriage. This is three months. Whoa. Three months in your marriage three and months. you're finding all this. Yes. Okay. Ain't no finding. He's doing. Ooh. He's doing. So, of course, I'm an investigator. <laughs> I need to know. <laughs> so, he go get drunk a little bit. Perfect time to look at the phone. And I'm seeing text messages. Hey, baby, how are you? So, I address him. I said, what's going on? He said, oh, it's nobody. It's nobody. What do you mean, nobody? You don't be talking to nobody, talking about, hey, baby. So, a couple months go by. I get a ring at the doorbell. I go to the door. He come follow behind, coming down the stairs. <laughs> right? <laughs> well, what you doing coming down the stairs? I got this. So, I go to the door. It's a sonogram on the door. No. Somebody taped a pen, a sonogram no, on the door? Did. She, ta she taped it on the door. Right. And this is, again, Early in your marriage. Yes, ma'am. All right, so, uh, Mr. Bearden. Yes, ma'am. Is this story that's being told the story that happened? It, it, when it happened, it happened like that, but it wasn't like that, though. So, <laughs> you know, I, I mean, it was like a friend, of, friend with benefits kind of like thing, and I actually didn't expect Did it to go kind of farther than what it did. And I don't even think that sonogram was for me anyways. Who was it That for? was like... That Who was supposed... That could have been anybody's baby or something like that. <laughs> I mean, come on now. At the end of the day, how really? you can tell off a of sonogram that that's actually my child? Like, she could have probably already was with been her, pregnant though. at the end you of was, the day, so... You was with her, right? I don't believe that was my, my baby anyway. Okay, but let, let's cut to the chase. Mm -hmm. Whether it's your baby or not, we're not here to decide that. Right. What I do want to confirm is... You had a friend with benefits within three months of your marriage. It was something that I was getting out of her that obviously I wasn't getting from her. So oh, that's what the was reason it? why... What was it? I mean... Yeah. Well, I'm almost scared to ask what was she doing that right. your wife wasn't doing. Because I can bounce that thing, too. Uh... <laughs> okay. Yeah. That's true. If that's you true. don't ask, you don't get... Right. That's true. So, obviously, what happened in Vegas didn't stay in Vegas. It didn't Show stay didn't. in Vegas. So <laughs> didn't. It, and it was so bad the way it happened because, I mean, I got basically told on, so... Mm -hmm. I, it would have stayed in Vegas, but... Are you mad because of what you did or you got mad... Because I got caught. Because you got, got caught. caught. <laughs> <laughs> mad because I got caught. I mean, it, this is what probably, you know, got my marriage the way it is right now. Mm -hmm. So... That was early in your marriage. Mm -hmm. We're seven years down the road, so you stayed. I oh, need yeah. to know what made you stay. Because there have been a lot of folks that have been like, deuces. No. Right. Because he was... He's my superhero. All right. Oh. All right. He's the one that took me out of the relationship that I was before. He took me and my kids in. He didn't even know me. He's that guy that women dream about all the time. I want that guy. Mr. Bearden, what was it about her that you liked? 
you know, when I first met her, I knew she was like a shooting star to me. Um, wow. I mean, it's just, it's crazy. I mean, we're, we're compatible. I mean, when I first seen her walking towards me, it was like poetry in motion. I already knew right then and there. And you can just see it in our pictures. It's, it's love there for like a long, everlasting, that's, that's my heart. Perfect woman. So, you all got through it because she's perfect for you and he's your superhero. Yes, ma'am. Did he vow to you he wasn't gonna ever do this again? Yes, ma'am. He said that from this point on, it's gonna be no more. No more cheating, no more talking to women, no more. And you mean that today? Yes, ma'am. And you took him back because of that? Yes, sir. What are you here to do in light of that vow and in light of this past? I'm trying to, like she said, rebuild my marriage that's from going through construction right now, so I can't be without her. So I'm willing to do whatever it takes. And Ms. Bearder, but you're here today because mm -hmm. you think he's broke that second vow to you. Yes, ma'am. Why do you specifically believe he's cheating? Okay, so I noticed changes in the marriage again. So, as I noticed the changes, I noticed that he wasn't... He'll keep his phone on him. He wouldn't sit it down. So, of course, it was a party that we were doing. He got drunk again. And when I investigated, um, I seen text messages. And it wasn't just normal text messages. What'd they say? They were saying... He was saying he wants to have sex with her. But she wanted a relationship. Mr. Oh. Bearden, okay, did you text another woman to say, I want to have sex with you? No. She found these texts in your phone. Mm -hmm. I don't remember that. That's, same remember okay, that's that. the same thing I got. If you don't remember, it doesn't mean it didn't happen. I don't remember that. He remember. He I'm remember, because I remember. Honest. I don't remember or recall that happening at all, right. all. You made a vow to your wife after you got caught, said it would never happen again, and now she's saying she found texts in your phone indicating that it happened again. It, yeah, it happened. It did happen it did again? Happen. So you did send a text to a woman saying, I want to have sex with you? Yes, ma'am. It wasn't going to be nobody that nothing meant of it, though, but um, it was just a conversation. Okay, why would you just have a conversation about wanting to have sex with I'm another human. woman? I'm human, being stupid. Did you tell her at the time, yeah, that's me, I did it, I was wrong, or are you just now telling her that today? Just now. How are you feeling? I see the tears in your eyes. Mm. Talk to me. It's an ongoing thing. If I'm the person that you dreamed of, why is we, why are we going through this? I don't cheat on you. I don't talk, if I do talk to a dude, it's a friend that I know from years ago, before you. So why are we going through this? I mean, when you don't have, like, conversation in your household, it's hard you know, to kind of move on with what you're trying to do. And, like, that's what really happened. The fact that I wasn't getting no conversation, no nothing, it was because of the last time. So we've been going this whole time just, like, buddy-buddies and stuff like that instead of, like, really no, being together buddy, buddy. as a marriage. So what okay. am I supposed to do? And we get the importance of conversation. Right. Communication right. is essential. Is the key. That's the only way we survived all these years of because course. the communication may not always be pleasant, Right. But it's communication, and as right. long as you're communicating, that's what that I'm helps. Saying. I mean, that's, that's one of the secrets of our relationship. So, Ms. Bearden, you had to have been hurt when you saw those text messages. Yes, ma'am. Did you try to find the woman? I did. I talked to her. Yeah. What did she say? I spoke to her. Hey. I said, do you know that he's married and he has five kids? No, four at the time. She said, no, I did not know that. Did you ask her had they had sex? I asked her, she said, no. I don't believe that. I mean, a woman can say anything, just what she wants. She can tell I'm, I'm the wife. She's the other woman. She can tell me whatever. All right, and so, Mr. Bearden, she confronts you with this conversation that she's had with this other woman hmm. who you've texted to say, I want to have sex with you. What do you tell your wife in response to that? It was an accident, basically. You said it was an accident. It was an accident. You accidentally texted <laughs> another woman that you want to have sex with her. I mean, it sounds bad and it make me look definitely badder and worse by saying it, but yes, I was about to go out elsewhere and find what I didn't get at, wasn't getting at home. But you're saying you didn't do it. No. Have you found any, or do you have any physical evidence... Yes. ...that Mr. Bearden is cheating? Yes, Your Honor. Okay, tell me about that. So, with the same woman, I'm assuming, for Mother's Day, he had bought me some food arrangements. Okay. Okay. And so, that was delivered to the house. So, like a month after that, I got my bank statement. I see food arrangements twice with two different prices. Okay. Okay, so... Me being an investigator, <laughs> I called Fruit Arrangements. And I talked to a nice young lady, and she described my wonderful husband to me. 
She said he was nice, he was sweet and funny. I said, well, I want to know if, it's, if you can tell me what was bought. She said, sure. So I gave her the information and she told me the first item was a fruit arrangement for $80. And it was delivered. So I said, okay, that's mine, it's okay. And so she said, the second one was picked up. And it was with chocolate covered strawberries, 12. Whoa. So somebody deserved 12 chocolate covered strawberries. Cause I, I, I presume you did not get those 12. I didn't get no strawberries, his mama didn't get no strawberries either. Mr. Bearden, uh, where did the strawberries land? Mm -hmm. It accidentally got swiped twice. That's the only thing that happened and I mean, it didn't go to nobody else. Okay, okay Mr. Mr. Beard. Twice. All right, wait, hold on. All right. Swipe twice. Did you send a fruit arrangement to your wife? Yes. Did you send a second fruit arrangement to your wife? Yes. You sent her two? Twice. She No, did you send her two fruit arrangements? No, I didn't. So you only sent one to your wife? Yes, sir. All right, did you, did you order chocolate-covered strawberries? Yes. Okay, did you send those to your wife? No. No. Who did you send those to? The other girl. The other girl. And this is the first time you're hearing it. Yes, this is. Okay, so it wasn't a swipe twice situation. No. I, I, I'm not liking what I'm hearing, but I am appreciating that you're being truthful. This is the place to come clean. So I can live with that. But she can't live with you and another woman. And she can't live with this uncertainty. And she shouldn't have to. You're right. So the court has called a friend of the court. Wow. <laughs> Miss Tammy Roman, who appears on the TV show Basketball Wives LA mm. and is the author of a book, Mistress 101. Ron, would you escort Miss Roman in? Yes, Shauna. <laughs> How are you? How are you? It's good to see you. Same so here. good to see Happy you. Happy to be here. You have dealt with written about yes. infidelity. Mm. Tell them about it. Would you share with Ms. Bearden what you know about that and how to deal with it? First thing I want to say to you is I am heated. Because <laughs> let me tell you what I see. A beautiful, intelligent, dynamic woman who does not recognize her worth and her value. <laughs> That's what I've been listening to. Okay? I've been you. I've been that woman who sat home, who tried to be a good wife, who tried to be positive, mm -hmm. who tried to uplift my man. Mm -hmm. And what was he doing? He was out with every chick in every city mm -hmm. that he visited. Mm -hmm. I've been on the phone. I've talked to the young lady. Please leave my husband alone. Mm -hmm. I will. Mm -hmm. Two kids later. Mm -hmm. Okay? And I'm gonna challenge you. Okay? She said that you fell in love with her children first. Don't you know those kids are looking up to you? Yes. Don't you know those kids need you to be a representative and be the king that you're supposed to be? And how you treating their mother is unacceptable. You're right. You're right. You're right. Now, that's real talk. That's, that's real. real talk for you. That's and you keep fair. saying, well, I made a mistake. Mistake is one time. Mm -hmm. Now you're giving her behavior, consistent behavior mm -hmm. in this relationship. The longer you keep using, well, there's lack of communication. The longer you keep making excuses for why you're having this behavior, then that means you really don't want to be in that situation. All right, Mr. Bearden, you're I, almost tearing up. I can see it. Because it's crazy. I'm really, like, feeling like the bad person in this. And it's like, you know, I, I always hear the saying, once a cheater, there's always a cheater and stuff like that, but... Excuse me one second. You missed what I said at the top which was I need you to be a king True. and show her a different type of behavior. Right. Because repeating the same things means you're not changing. Right. Mm -hmm. I didn't say a cheater was always gonna be a cheater, but I'm saying prove that. Don't right. talk about it, be about it. Right. There you go. Yeah. Mr. Oh. Bearden, we've talked about the importance of honesty and I'm, I'm not getting the sense that you're being completely honest with us. This woman that you were texting, the woman you said a fruit arrangement to. Have you been intimate with that woman? This woman that you were texting, the woman you said a fruit arrangement to. Have you been intimate with that woman? Yes. You have. It was like, 
crazy. Like a couple times. It shouldn't have happened. But, I mean, that's why I'm here trying to tell her the truth so I can try to get this uh, over with. I mean, it was, oh my God, I can't believe, you know, it happened, but it happened. When was the last time you were with this woman, intimately? <sighs> like, a, like a week ago, a couple weeks ago. Ms. Ben, you're crying. I can see the tears coming down your face. I feel hurt. I feel, I feel used. I mean, I love my husband. I'm in love with my husband. He's my number one hero. So I'm not gonna divorce him. I don't believe in divorce. Mr. Bearden, I commend you for being here. I also commend you for telling a hard truth because it's, it's gotta be embarrassing to you. But here's the deal. You keep putting yourself in situations where it's gonna lead to infidelity. You can't flirt and have conversations and text messages with these women and wink, wink at them and think it's not gonna lead to something bad. Right. I love this man. Mm -hmm. Love is strong, but it's not enough. Mm -hmm. right. You gotta do something with that love. You, right. I mean, you gotta do something with right. it. Talk is cheap. Right. You gotta put yourself in it all the way in. And what I would say to you is if you spend all your time working on loving her, you ain't gonna have the energy or the time to fool with these other women.